Hello, and thank you for joining today's webcast entitled Office 365, Transform and Reinvent Your Business Model. My name is Josh Wache, and I'll be today's MC. Uh, I'm what they call a Microsoft Partner Sales Executive, and along with me is Tim Tetrick, my technical specialist, who will be demonstrating Office 365 for you guys today. And in addition, we have Sean Farrell, the CEO of Manage Solution, who's going to wrap us up with some insights for you around making the move to Office 365 from a migration and deployment perspective. It's worth noting, I've worked with Manage Solution for most of my 10-year career at Microsoft, and I'm proud to consider myself as a part of their team. They're really in a league of their own when it comes to their professionalism and expertise, along with just the sheer depth and breadth of their Microsoft Solutions knowledge. It also doesn't hurt that they give a guarantee on their service projects. So long story short, they're highly endorsed by us. And if you choose to use Managed Solution for your move to Office 365 or other Microsoft Cloud solutions, um, I'm, I'm confident you'll be pleased with your decision. Uh, during today's presentation, we're going to talk about business challenges at a very high level, along with some trends and emerging themes that Microsoft has observed recently in the way businesses interact with information and technology. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and get started. The world has changed, right? We live in a world where devices outnumber people. Uh, and, and create more data than people can consume. And in fact, in the U.S., the last that I heard is it's about three and a half devices per information worker. And the pace of change is faster than ever. Uh, technology has led to disruptions in our personal and professional lives. And we used to talk about these disruptive trends as if they were in silos. Um, so you've got con consumerization of IT, uh, bring your own device, Internet of Things, right? Uh, these trends are still important and have impact by themselves, but their combined impact is greater. And we really need to reimagine productivity in order to remain successful as individuals and companies. Uh, and when we're productive, we make things and, and we make things happen, sometimes on our own, but it seems that more often it's together. And Microsoft recognizes this and is, is excited to share with you how we're essentially democratizing technology by bringing enterprise class capabilities and solutions to the masses, to businesses of all sizes. And we hear about our customers' business challenges every day. It's very important to us to source what's happening and how you guys are feeling. And they tell us things like, uh, we need anywhere and anytime access to files and business tools to stay competitive, and also to keep costs down. They tell us that uh, their data needs to be secure and that they need to know that their company is protected from viruses, malware, theft, etc. And many come to realize that they can actually level up in this area as they learn that the uh, security and compliance parity gap, if you will, uh, that used to exist between on-premises and cloud solutions is now gone. They also tell us that we need modern solutions that foster collaboration and help us get work done more efficiently. Uh, and customers also want solutions that will inspire, that are exciting to use. Uh, they tell us that uh, we need solutions that will evolve with us um, and, and let us stay connected no matter what or where for that matter. Um, and then, of course, zero downtime is a must. Um, you can't afford downtime. It's, it's very difficult to put a cost of an hour of downtime, let alone a day. Companies, they just can't, they can't stomach it. They, there's no downtime uh, available within their picture, and, and uh, it's just a must. Zero downtime is a must. And then we want to start using the cloud to our advantage and save money along the way while spending smarter. And we've seen more recently how major IT decisions uh, are really being heavily influenced, if not controlled, by the CFO's desk, as there are many financial advantages to moving to the cloud. Let me ask you this. Uh, guess how many of the Fortune 500 companies in the class of 1955 are still listed today? Fewer than 11%. <laughs> there are only 61 companies that appear on both lists, and 89% are gone. Half a century ago, the life expectancy of a firm in the Fortune 500 was around 75 years. Now it's less than 15 years and declining even further. And I'm sure you can guess how these statistics are even worse in the SMB segment. So what's going on here? Um, Jack Welch put it best, I think. He said, if the rate of change on the outside exceeds the rate of change on the inside, then the end is near. Um, 
let's try to connect the dots on a few things. So the world is is now a giant network, and it really is. If we could only see it all around us, maybe it would be like a, a scene from The Matrix when Neo gets his first peek into reality, right? It's an important uh, to understand that the power of networks and their relevance to productivity and what our CEO Satya Nadella has deemed a mobile first cloud first world. Uh, and really it boils down to the fact that we are, are greater than the sum of our constituent parts. And socially network communications are rapidly taking over as a more effective way of exchanging information in the modern world. Uh, there's one recent study that estimates uh, enterprise social platform usage uh, will grow from 208 million users in 2013 uh, to 535 million users in 2018. So what's driving this growth? Uh, because networks are open and transparent by nature, they help unlock the siloed knowledge of employees and create uh, what we're calling shared intent. And this accelerates innovation, responsiveness, problem solving, and learning. And people really feel more productive and information flows faster and is more likely to reach the right people through networks than through hierarchical and point to point communication structures. So this change in communication tools, it's really putting massive stress on traditional organizational structures and uh, that are built to control information flow. They, they suddenly need to accommodate networks that are more open and transparent and assume that decisions uh, are made at the edges. Uh, networks are also becoming the organizing principle for people to get together and create value. And the talent pool is now global, with 40% or more of the U.S. workforce expected to be made up of contingent or independent workers by 2020, uh, which is astounding if you think about it. People will increasingly use networks to form teams fluidly around projects as needed. Um, and this means that teams and collaboration are becoming more important. We used to focus on productivity tools for individuals, but in the information abundant world that we're talking about, the opportunity for this theme of value creation is really shifting to the collective. So let's talk about modern collaboration. Modern means two things in this context. First, it refers to the ubiquity of the cloud with ubiquity or ubiquitous being uh, everywhere at once. And this shifts us from a world of individual creation to real time, anytime, anywhere, collaboration and collective creation. The cloud provides a ubiquitous computing fabric to light up experiences and devices from our data centers down to our customer servers. And the cloud is also fundamental to the second area of ubiquity, which is devices. The cloud powers our devices. And we believe in a truly mobile world that revolves around us. So any device can become your device. Earlier, we discussed the need to move from tools focused on our individual abilities to tools that empower social productivity, to unlock the power of the group. And as the dynamics of where we work change, so are the dynamics of how we meet changing as well. Uh, here's an example in the background. It's a Surface Hub and a Link, now called Skype for Business, combined to create uh, a new kind of modern meeting where you can join scheduled and ad hoc meetings with one tap uh, that take advantage of HD video and audio experiences with intelligent sensors, microphones, and, and built-in dual cameras. And you might not see this in every conference room today, but we're not that far off uh, and the technology is here and it's getting cheaper every day. With Office 365, people can access the documents for wherever they are on whatever device they're on. This is a theme that you'll hear me repeat over and over. <laughs> Natively, saving to the cloud, it's something that really changes how you interact with documents. Um, just as a personal example, uh, in reference to uh, a device that died on me and I needed a refresh, uh, whereas before it would take me like a half a day to get up and running again, um, you know, back to full speed. Uh, and now because I, I use Office 365, I use OneDrive for business, we have federated identity here at Microsoft, I'm up and running in, in under an hour. Um, not only that, uh, with multiple devices, it doesn't matter which one that I'm on, because everything is stored in the cloud, it's easy to move from one device to the next and have that just pick up right where I left off and have that same experience. So 
Earlier, we discussed the need to move from tools focused on um, our individual abilities to tools that empower social productivity. And ubiquitous cloud services and the devices uh, uh, that access them are just part of what we believe powers our vision of the modern workplace. Um, and tools like Yammer, OneDrive, and features like uh, co-authoring, uh, it allows idea generation and crowdsourcing to essentially happen in, in real time. And now there's also uh, this new Office 365 video experience, and you could read about this on our Office blog site, but we feel that video has emerged as one of the most powerful mediums of communication. And with Office 365 video, uh, it, it can provide organizations with a secure company-wide destination for posting, sharing, and discovering video content from any device. So from onboarding new employees to distributing a CEO message company-wide, video is now a first class citizen to power and enrich uh, your internal devices. Um, and we now live in an office everywhere world from Windows to Macintosh, iPhone, Android. Uh, and we also believe people should be able to connect and be productive wherever they are. Um, let's look at Skype for Business again. In the first half of 2015, the next version of Link, uh, it becomes Skype for Business. It's, it's already out with many of our, our client tenants. And uh, with a new client experience, a new server release, and updates to the service in Office 365, and really it takes the best of Link and the best of Skype uh, and puts them together. And we believe that Skype for Business will again transform the way people communicate by giving organizations reach to hundreds of millions of Skype users outside the walls of their business. I'm personally intrigued and excited to see how this is going to play out. I, I believe the, the intersection of these technologies, it's going to allow us to recognize the power of our networks uh, across our personal and our work lives. Let's segue for a moment from this concept of ubiquitous collaboration and, and talk briefly about the challenges presented by infinite data, apps, and devices in a world of finite time. Uh, the global data volume is doubling in size every two years. Uh, by 2020, the digital universe, uh, the data that we create and copy annually, will grow by a factor of 10. From 4.4 zettabytes, or 4.4 trillion gigabytes, in 2013, to 44 zettabytes, or 44 trillion gigabytes. The number is, it's nuts, right? And the half-life of information is also falling fast. There was a recent study that estimated uh, that knowledge becomes obsolete at a rate of 30% per year, leaving you with as little as 15% relevant technical knowledge within just five years. Um, and the volume of communications is also exploding. It was a study done at the University of London that found that constant emailing and text messaging reduces the mental capability of, uh, uh, by an average of 10 points on an IQ test. Uh, it was said that this effect is three times worse than smoking cannabis and similar to missing a night's sleep. So good luck being productive uh, in that future work environment, right? So for data to be meaningful with the volume that we have to deal with, it's got to be personalized by intelligent software and tools that understand the context of why people do things, not simply what they do. Uh, the work that we've already done shows where we're headed uh, and differentiates us, I believe. At the platform level, Azure Machine Learning, as an example, provides powerful cloud-based predictive analytics. Uh, you know, for the end user, the office graph it uses sophisticated machine learning techniques to map the relationships between people, content, and activity that occurs across Office 365. It will also power experiences across Office 365 like Delve and Clutter, where insights are derived from a user's behavior, their relationships to content, topics, uh, and to other users. So personalization is key, but equally important is the ability to drive insights into the data. Whether it's a student using predictive charts in Excel, uh, or a customer using Power BI to gauge the effectiveness, effectiveness of uh, their client's campaigns in real time. So Office 365, it's the platform that democratizes business intelligence and enables not only personalization of data, but really crucially helps people drive insights into their data. 
So as we evolve to a truly mobile world that revolves around us so that any device can become your device that you use, the risks associated with our devices and cloud services increases. Uh, consumer reports uh, have stated that last year in the United States, over 3 million mobile phones were stolen and over about a million and a half were lost. So it's vital that we secure data on these devices in transit, in the data center, and have a method to authenticate the individual. We must focus on the personal challenges of protecting individuals and their devices while also guarding against the macro threat of cybercrime. Our approach to these challenges that are really intensely personal as well as threatening to the broader organization is to focus on what we call people-centric compliance. Now, people-centric, it's a bold statement, uh, but it's not just about individual users on the front line, nor is it solely about IT administrators. Uh, people-centric is our aspiration. It's a relentless focus on empowering people without compromising uh, compliance or security. Let me expand. So too often an extreme is chosen. It's either security at the expense of productivity or flexibility at the cost of protection. We're focused on making security a natural part of the tools that people use and are comfortable with every single day. If organizations put onerous ways of, of working in place to secure data, end users will just simply find a, a workaround. So our best-in-class security, uh, it's been developed over decades of building enterprise software and online services. Uh, and our privacy by design ensures that customer information is only used to deliver services and not advertising. Uh, and our compliance leadership is, has been earned by driving and adopting compliance standards in support of our enterprise customers' needs. And now we're bringing all of that uh, to the masses, once again, to SMB, to mid-market. So uh, we highlight an example on uh, the this, this slide of data loss prevention here, uh, which customers like Aston Martin have been using to prevent data leaks from their organization. We have these conferences called Ignite Conferences. And when I first heard about data loss prevention, there was a story that was told that I got to retell to you. Um, there, you know, this uh, essentially DLP allows administrators to define policies which um, protect them from uh, people accidentally or nefariously sending confidential information via email. The administrator has the ability to do one of three things. They could either say, look, we're going to do a policy tip notification and alert the end user that they're about to send confidential data, just maybe in the pilot phase of, of filling them in, hey, we've got this new tool, but we'll still let them send whatever they want to send. Secondly, we could do the same tip but say, hey, you can't send this. You've got to either uh, remove that data or reattach the file and make sure that second tab doesn't have any social security numbers or what have you, right? Uh, and then the third option is to BCC the compliance officer and let it leave the network. Uh, well, the story was told that there was a, a large organization that uh, put this in place. And at the end of the day, they were walking out one of their C-level executives in handcuffs because the compliance officer who was BCC'd uh, saw that he was selling confidential information to one of their competitors. So that's just a, a quick story that I picked up along the way, and it's it's fascinating to think about. Um, you know, so DLP, it's, it's people-centric, and, and it's no matter if you're the designer, the IT pro, or the risk officer. And this, this is just one piece of the puzzle, uh, and we've worked on integrating with our enterprise mobility suite a comprehensive and cost-effective solution for your enterprise mobility needs. We're a, a mobile-first, cloud-first company, right? Uh, our focus is on the cloud, and our, our engineers lead with Office 365. We're making at least monthly updates to the service and have full transparency into the roadmap with the Office 365 public roadmap. And this doesn't negate the importance uh, to Microsoft of hybrid scenarios, which is a big differentiator for, uh, for Microsoft uh, amongst our competitors. And for some customers, on-premises clients and servers, we're, we're committed to the next version of on-premise software and anticipate these releasing in our second half of 2015, uh, with these products remaining in mainstream support through uh, 2020. And our engineers are, are now not just responsible for shipping a, a DVD, giving it to customers, and then their involvement is over. 
they're now running a service and that's changed how they build the software and our release cycles. And traditionally in the on-premise world, we had a three-year cycle and in the interim, there'd be service packs, right? Uh, we're now making updates weekly, monthly, quarterly to all parts of our service. Highlighted uh, our, here in the slider, uh, some of the most recent advances and those coming in the near future. We're also much more open about this than we've ever been before. Um, and we now publish a, the public roadmap that I just mentioned. It's really a fantastic resource and it, uh, it gives great insight into where the service is going in, in the near term uh, and in the future. So I encourage you to take a look at that. So what is Office 365 again, right? We've talked about all of these themes and concepts and, and compliance and security and, and leveling up. Um, so I wanted to show you a full plan lineup. Um, the way that I try to help customers think about Office 365 is, is first and foremost, it's Office, right? It's the full version of Office uh, with the ability to download the bits directly to your machine as if you would via installing via a DVD. Um, but not only that, you can install Office on up to five devices per user subscription license. And if you remember me talking about how the average information worker in the US has three and a half devices per person, this can be a blessing. Um, so you can have the Office experience in this ubiquitous collaborative format across all of your devices. So first and foremost, I'd say it's Office. And then secondly, it's a, a bunch of services that we wrap around Office, including Exchange Online and SharePoint Online and now Skype for Business. Um, and so we have two different primary plan types. We've got the business plan and the enterprise plan for our commercial customers. And I would say that um, I'm not a huge fan of the nomenclature of the word enterprise, just because I feel people see that and they say, well, that's not really for us. But let's go back to that idea of you leveling up, of you uh, obtaining a competitive differentiator, or speeding up your time to market, or, or uh, protecting yourself from a compliance perspective. And looking at some of these advanced services in the bottom left here, we just talked about data loss prevention. There's also another feature, uh, rights management, RMS, and message encryption, which allows you to determine who can forward and who can reply and who can do screenshots or print uh, a specific email per your definition of uh, the feature. Um, there's also compliance uh, with archiving e-discovery and litigation hold. And, and by the way, all, all companies, regardless of their public or private status, fall under the Federal Rule of Civil Procedure Amendment, which essentially defines email as um, uh, discoverable evidence in court proceedings. So it's extremely important that you, um, you have a story there and you have your act together when it comes to archiving. Um, and that feature alone can save you tens of thousands of dollars if you ever were involved in a litigious event um, and unfortunately you didn't have these features. So strongly consider you to uh, take a look at that and, and really lean towards the enterprise plan regardless of what size business you are. So in your discovery process, take those into consideration um, and uh, keep that in mind. The business plans offer great value, but if I was a small business, even if I was a five user, I'd still look at the enterprise plan. So that's my pitch there. Um, I think it's easier understood when you see some of these things in action. So at this point, um, I think we're gonna turn it over to Tim uh, Tetrick. And Tim, thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate your time and I'm excited to see what you have for us in store with your demo. So at this point, I'm gonna flip it over to you and uh, you have the floor. Okay, thanks a lot, Josh, and hello, everyone. Uh, I just want to spend the next 20 minutes or so walking you through a hands-on demonstration of Office 365. And we're going to start the demo here in Outlook, uh, which is part of the Office 365 Pro Plus desktop client that comes with Office 365. Uh, it includes uh, Outlook as well as the other Office applications you've come to know and love, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, etc. So lots of great features and capabilities to talk about here. Let me show you just a few of my favorites. Uh, one of those is a feature called Peaks. Uh, Peaks gives me uh, just a quick view into my calendar without having to switch into the full calendar mode. Um, I can also peek into my people or contacts and into my tasks. Uh, touch mode uh, gives me the ability to quickly move between a touch mode interface and between a mouse and keyboard interface, depending on the type of device I'm on and depending on how I want to interact with that specific device. 
uh, next Office apps. So uh, you can go out to the Office App Store and download some cool little apps right into the Office uh, environment. Um, one of those I'll show you here as an example is called the Bing Map app. Um, so the way this works is whenever there is an address in an email, it will automatically pop the Bing Map app. And then I can click on that if I want, and it'll automatically map that address into a nice little inline interactive map right within the Outlook client. A DLP or data loss prevention, a uh, really powerful feature that allows me to prevent sensitive information uh, from either accidentally or maliciously being sent outside of my organization. So let me show you how this works. You can see here I have an email with a credit card number in it. Let's say if I try to forward that email to someone outside of my organization, you'll see I get this little pop-up message letting me know that this message appears to contain sensitive information. Make sure all recipients are authorized to receive it. If I hover over the policy tip here, you'll see it even recognizes specifically that, that there's a credit card number within that email. So a lot of power, power here with um, data loss prevention. Um, I can set this up so that it'll prevent users from being able to send emails. Uh, I could set it up so maybe it warns users or specific groups of users, but will allow them to override and send the information anyway. And in that case, maybe I want to blind copy a compliance manager or something like that. Um, there's templates out there to look for common you know, types of sensitive information. I can also set up uh, you know, custom sensitive types of information to look for as part of DLP. Uh, rights management um, allows me to send uh, encrypted and protected emails to other users in my organization. So let's go in, let's create a, start a new email here. Let's say I have some sen sensitive information in this email that I want to send to someone else in my organization. If I go up here to options, and under permissions, you see I have some permissions I can set here on this email. So for example, I can set a do not forward. So in addition to this email being encrypted, um, it also will set these do not forward permissions that allow the recipient to read the message, but they cannot forward. They also cannot print or copy the contents out of the message. Uh, there's also another capability under rights management called Office 365 message encryption, which will allow me to send an encrypted email to anyone at any email address. Uh, the online archive. Uh, so there's an online archive which provides a repository for archiving email, which replaces you know the traditional kind of PST file model. Um, some plans in Office 365 even have an, un an unlimited storage uh, archive in addition to their 50 gigabyte primary mailbox. So a number of ways you can interact with this online archive. I can drag and drop items to it. I can set up folder structures. Uh, another thing I can do actually is uh, set up uh, policies. So I can set up archiving policies so that items will automatically be moved to the archive after a certain amount of time. Um, there's also compliance archiving available. So um, also known as in place hold or litigation hold, which will permanently retain mailbox items in the archive, even if a user tries to edit or delete them. And you can go back as a compliance manager um, uh, and, and re, uh, do e-discovery and recover those emails, again, even if a user tries to delete them or edit them. Uh, you get the full calendaring capability with Outlook uh, that you've come to know and love, that rich full calendar support with the ability to share your calendar and view other people's calendars subject to permissions. Um, people gives me my personal contacts, complete with uh, contact photos, uh, all the information that I need to get at for my personal contacts. Uh, next, let's look at the Office 365 uh, portal. So this is a web-based portal where users and admins can get access to all the services within Office 365. Uh, it includes this nice little app launcher navigation experience uh, that allows me kind of a single point of access to all the services available uh, to a user. And this app launcher is a persistent icon up here in the upper uh, top left hand corner of the portal. No matter what uh, service I happen to be in, I can uh, get access to the other services. So. For example, mail uh, gives me browser-based access to my email. 
uh, from virtually any browser. So not only supported on Internet Explorer, but supported on Firefox, on Chrome, Safari on the Mac. Allows me anywhere access to my email. If I happen to be on a shared computer or a kiosk somewhere, I can still get access to my email. And as you can see, a very the interface is very similar to the Outlook desktop client that we just looked at. So no need for you or your users to learn a new interface. Uh, and a lot of the same great features. You know, my online folders are showing up, my in-place archive, my online archive. I can drag and drop items. Um, I get the reading pane. I get things like conversation view. All these great features making their way over to the browser-based mail client. Uh, I can also get access again to my calendar and to my people or contacts. Again, cross-browser support, uh, uh, anywhere access. And by the way, even though we don't have time to really show it today, Office 365 also works together nicely with your mobile devices. So your Windows tablet, your Windows phone, iPhone, iPad, your Android-based phones and tablets, allowing you to seamlessly connect those devices to Office 365 uh, and get your email, your company directory, your calendar, your contacts, your tasks, everything that we've just been looking at here so far. And each of those platforms also has native apps for accessing your Office documents for both viewing and editing. Um, they also have native apps for accessing the other services that we're going to be looking at here in just a minute. Things like OneDrive for Business, Skype for Business, the other services within Office 365. So let's talk a little bit about Skype for Business now. So Office 365 includes Skype for Business Online, previously known as Link Online, to provide you with instant messaging, presence, streaming audio and video, screen sharing, web conferencing, all together in one service. So one way you can interact with Skype for Business Online is via the Skype for Business desktop client. That's what we're looking at right here. Uh, we'll also see Skype for Business actually flows through into the other services and applications as well. So I can go into the Skype for Business desktop client. I can set up users and groups of users that I frequently interact with. And you see I get some information back on those users. Uh, I get contact photos and I'm also getting presence information. So presence is really the real-time status information of users. And the reason it's important is it allows me to make some really great decisions on the best way to interact, to communicate, collaborate with my colleagues when I know their status. So for example, if I have a quick question for Amy here, I can see that she's away from her desk. So I'm not going to bother trying to reach out to her uh, you know, via instant messaging or via calling her desk. Maybe I send her an email, she can respond later, or maybe I call her cell phone if I really need to get a hold of her. But with Julian here, uh, I can see that he is in a green available status. So if I want to communicate with him, uh, maybe uh, I choose to reach out to him via an instant message. I know he's at his desk, he's available, ready to take my question. If I hover over his name here, I get these uh, these click to communicate buttons for reaching out to him. I can uh, easily start an IM conversation with him, for example. So uh, I do that. Maybe we start communicating over IM back and forth. Uh, at some point in the conversation, maybe I want to escalate this IM conversation into more of a full-blown communication and collaboration session. So what is really great with Skype for Business is with just a click or two of the mouse, I can escalate this IM conversation into a video conference. You see I get a nice little video preview there before I start my video. I could also start the, a, a Skype call, an audio call. Um, I could also start sharing. So I could start presenting my desktop uh, with Julian. I could present uh, and share a specific program. I could upload a PowerPoint file that we could start collaborating on. I could add attachments and shared notes. I can even do things like whiteboarding, polling, Q&A, really powerful capabilities within Skype for Business. Again, the ability to pick the, 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 the communication and collaboration method that best suits my situation. And this ability to communicate and collaborate, as I mentioned earlier, not just available via the Skype for Business client. Instant messaging, presence, uh, actually flows into the other services as well. So just as an example, let's go back to Outlook here. We'll go back to 
uh, mail. And as we can see here, uh, I can see Amy Alberts. I can see her presence information, just like I saw it in the Skype for Business client. I get these quick click to communicate buttons. I can, again, quickly start a, uh, an IM conversation. I can do audio. I can do video. Uh, Skype for Business uh, flowing into the other services. And not only Outlook, also the, the browser-based mail client flows into SharePoint as well as we'll see in just a few minutes. So Skype for Business can also be used for scheduled web conferences as well. So we looked at this kind of on the fly, ad hoc communication collaboration, but it can also be used for scheduled web conferences. And let me show you how that works. Let's go back into Outlook here. Let's say that we have this email. I'm going to respond to this email with a meeting request. And let's say that I know that some or all of my employees that I'm inviting to this uh, meeting are going to be remote and I want them to be able to join uh, via a remote web conference. So through this nice little Skype meeting plugin into Outlook with one click of the mouse I can automatically turn this remote web conference uh, or this meeting into a remote web conference. So when any of my attendees get ready to join and they are remote they can just go in and click the join Skype meeting link they will uh, be entered into the meeting here and as you can see here if they're using the Skype for Business desktop client it's the same experience that we just looked at right the same ability to do instant messaging to do uh, video to do audio to do screen sharing uh, all those same great capabilities available to me whether in a one-to-one -one communication collaboration session through Skype for Business or through a scheduled web conference. Uh, this uh, web conferencing capability supports up to 250 attendees, both internal and external attendees. So if I have external attendees that want to join, or if I have even internal attendees that don't have the Skype for Business client on their desktop, they can uh, easily join through the Skype for Business web app downloads right into the browser, cross-browser support allows any of those users to have all those same great capabilities that we just looked at. Instant messaging, streaming audio, video, screen sharing, all of that. We also have, I mentioned earlier, Skype for Business mobile clients um, that allow you to join Skype meetings from your tablet or phone with cross-platform uh, cross support, iOS, Android, uh, and Windows devices. So next I want to talk just a little bit about Yammer and then we're going to finish up with OneDrive for Business and SharePoint Team Site. So first Yammer. I'm going to go back into my Office 365 portal and launch Yammer. So Yammer comes with Office 365 and provides social networking for the enterprise. As you can see here it looks a lot like some of the consumer social networking products that you may be used to using in your personal life. Um, and you get the same benefits with Yammer that you get with those consumer social networking products. So you get the ability to share information with others in your organization. You get the ability to learn from others, connecting with others uh, in your organization in a very unique way. Uh, so you can, you know, within Yammer, go in and, and set up groups, subscribe to different groups you want to follow. Um, you get, you know, activity feeds, uh, commenting, doing hashtagging um, and at mentions, things like that. You can also follow people, topics, conversations. Ultimately, Yammer providing you with the ability to share, learn, collaborate in a way that you're just, you know, wouldn't be possible without a tool like this. So just a quick, a brief talk on Yammer. So now let's talk a little bit about OneDrive for Business. So go back up into our app launcher, go to OneDrive for Business. OneDrive for Business is your personal document library. Uh, it's the place for individuals to store and share their work documents and other files. Each user gets one terabyte of storage today and that's going to be going to unlimited storage in the future. So you can see here's my OneDrive for Business uh, library here. Um, I can quickly go up and look at the documents that have been shared with me by others. Um, I have access to a recycle bin which keeps uh, uh, deleted documents for up to 90 days by default. I can go in and recover those if I want. Uh, just to show you a few of the features capabilities uh, within OneDrive for Business and managing files, 
Um, and, and keep in mind, these are the same capabilities that I'm about to show you that are available in SharePoint team sites as well. And we're going to look at that in just a second. So just keep that in mind. But uh, great features like document previewing. So, you know, if I'm looking for something in a document, uh, instead of having to open the whole document, I can just go in here and quickly preview, interactive preview of the, uh, of the document contents. Um, also, the sharing experience is really, really great. Uh, I can share uh, a file, I can share an entire folder, I can share an entire site. Um, I can share not only internally, but externally as well. So let me show you what that looks like. Let's say I want to share this uh, particular file out. I'm going to click on that and go to share. Uh, I can go in here and put in uh, the names and email addresses of the people I want to share with, again, internally and externally. I can choose what kind of rights I want them to have, edit rights, view rights. I can include a quick uh, uh, email. Uh, if I want to, to send this in an email invitation, or I can also just go out and get a link if I want to include this in maybe a, a different email or another document or something. And then I can also manage sharing. I can go back and say, okay, who have I shared this document with? Uh, what kind of rights do they have? I can change the rights on the fly. I can stop sharing. I can even email everyone with an update. So really powerful uh, sharing capabilities. Uh, syncing. Definitely want to talk about that as well. I can do offline syncing. So if I go up here and say sync, we'll say sync now. Let me know my files are being synced. I can sh uh, go ahead and take a look at them. And you see here all my files up in my OneDrive for Business repository being synced down to the local machine. Uh, this is going to give me not only offline access, but also this is a two-way sync. So if I want to add more files into, I prefer to work with you know files on my local desktop right within Windows Explorer. I add files in here, they'll automatically get backed up to OneDrive for Business. They're safe and secure in the cloud, accessible from anywhere, a two-way sync uh, experience. I can also drag and drop files uh, into uh, my OneDrive for Business repository. Very nice experience instead of saying upload, which I could do, or I can just drag and drop. So a very convenient experience there. Uh, other capabilities to talk about, uh, uh, check in, check out is one capability you can do with managing documents. Again, in OneDrive for Business or SharePoint team sites, I can do a check in, check out. Um, I can also do versioning. So I can set up versioning so that as people are collaborating on a document, making changes, I know those old changes won't be you know, permanently uh, deleted. I could always go back and view and restore an old document. And by the way, just a little plug again for Skype for Business, uh, I remember I mentioned that the, the presence information and the click to communicate buttons flowing into SharePoint and OneDrive for Business as well. If I had a quick uh, question for Julian, I see his presence here. I could go in and, and, and choose to reach out to him in the method that best suited us through Skype for Business. Okay, so let's finish up talking about SharePoint team sites now. So we'll go back up to the app launcher. Uh, we're going to go to sites. That's my SharePoint team sites. So SharePoint team sites help keep your teams in sync. Uh, team members can access a SharePoint team site to do things like store, share, organize, collaborate, and access information from almost any device. So from within sites, uh, we can go in, we could promote, as an administrator, I could go in and promote specific sites that I want to highlight to my users. Um, as a user, I can also go in and follow specific sites, uh, and those will show up here. So let's go into the, our, our Contoso team site here. This is my company uh, intranet site in this example, and a very common use for SharePoint. I'll have this company intranet site. I also have these team subsites here that I can go into for all the different uh, groups in my organization, HR, operations, sales and marketing, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, let's go into the sales and marketing site. Uh, while we're here, I just want to highlight Power BI real quick. If you're not familiar with Power BI, just to give you a quick uh, view into it. So Power BI, uh, really powerful, allows you to build and host some fantastic BI reports. Uh, that you can build using Excel and then host in this nice little dashboard. So you see these interactive BI reports that I have to choose from. I can go in there, start getting some uh, important insights about my business. So let's go back to the sales and marketing team site. So let's say that I'm a part of an account team working on the Northwind Traders account. Uh, again, keeping teams in sync. Sometimes it's project teams, sometimes it's organizational teams. I'm part of the Northwind account, so I'm going to go in here to the Northwind Traders 
uh, subsite. You see in here I get some you know information. I also get some things like um, some business intelligence, some key performance indicator type stuff. I'm also getting a document library, uh, a very powerful feature of team sites, right, where there's documents that a team needs to share, collaborate on. I can have a central repository for those. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, all those same capabilities I talked about in OneDrive for Business also available with uh, SharePoint team site document library. Those things that I talked about like doing uh, document previewing and sharing and syncing and versioning. Uh, you also have the ability to do co-authoring where multiple people can uh, actually work on a document simultaneously. And just to finish up here, I just want to show you uh, just briefly how easy it is to actually create these SharePoint team sites. You look at this, you probably say those are really cool, um, but you know what does it take to be able to create these team sites? Well, a lot of what you can do, uh, you can do just right out of the box, very simply and easy. And let me show you what that looks like. I can go in and say subject to permission, say new, create a new team site. It takes just a few minutes to provision one. Uh, I have one here that I've provisioned recently just to show you once you go into that new team site we have this nice little wizard e experience for uh, uh, stepping you through customizing your site. So you can go in here to sh uh, share your site, set up permissions, who you want to be able to access the site and what permissions they have. You can go in here and add uh, little web parts uh, into your team site for tasks, timelines, calendars. Uh, you can start changing the look of the site. You can do uh, branding, adding logos, things like that. Uh, you can also add list libraries and apps. And I want to go into that real quick and just show you the power here of these existing apps that are out there. Uh, you can go in and uh, again, quickly and easily add a document library, add a task list, a site mailbox. There's also these other apps that you can add for things like here's a Yammer app for SharePoint. It, it, it shows Yammer feeds right within a SharePoint page. Uh, you have third-party apps that you can go get out of the SharePoint store, like this DocuSign for doing electronic signing of documents right within SharePoint. Great little app. You can go out into the SharePoint store here uh, and look at all of the apps that are out there. Pull them down into your SharePoint team sites. Start really enhancing uh, the team site experience. So, thanks for watching. That's all we have time for today. So at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Josh. Josh? Excellent demo, Tim. Thank you very much for uh, showing us how Office 365 works. I definitely appreciate your time. Uh, so folks, at this point, we are going to transition over to Sean Farrell of Managed Solution, who's going to talk a little bit about their company as well as what they bring to the table uh, as far as helping you get to Office 365 and, and migrate your workloads to the Microsoft Cloud. So with that being said, Sean, I'm going to flip it over to you and you have the floor. Well, thanks, Josh and Tim, for the uh, intro. Um, we really appreciate that and going through Office 365 and showing the people um, some of the different tools and functions within. Well, my name is Sean Farrell. I'm the CEO and president of Managed Solution. Um, and today we want to talk about really what Office 365 is and really to that what the business outcome is. So we say that really Office 365 is something that helps transform and reinvent the business model. I think business leaders and CEOs, presidents and different um, top level executives are really looking for business value in the technology they invest in these days. So when we talk about things like creating a more mobile workforce or driving culture in our business, believe it or not, through internal platforms that communicate what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis, or better ways to you know, remotely connect you know, via audio and video conferencing, or just having productivity tools put in front of us you know, from any device, anytime, anywhere, those are the things that I think the business leader of today is looking for, and they're tools within Office 365. So for us at Managed Solution, um, we're what we call an IT as a service provider. So we do everything as a service. We manage devices, we manage platforms like Office 365 and, and other tools out there in the industry. But um, we are a great partner with Microsoft and I wanted to get into some of the things that we do. So first of all, I would start with, you know, we're really part of your team. You know, uh, Managed Solution was built on this whole idea of kind of playing everything like a sports team. So I consider myself a coach to the team. We have players who uh, play as part of our team, which are, of course, our engineering and operational staff. And then you, the customer, are really our fans. And for the fans, we want to provide the best user experience we can in providing products like Office 365 and or even tools like Microsoft Azure, which we could um, talk about in a different conversation. So 
who we are as it pertains to Microsoft, you know, we sit in the top 1% of Microsoft partners worldwide. I think the statistics shows there's about 680,000 partners and we sit in the top 1%. What we do is pure services delivery. We help you with procurement of licensing. We help you with hardware procurement. But, but what we focus on is making sure that the delivery and the service that you get from us is, you know, bar none. Um, as far as uh, Microsoft Partner, you know, we are one of their what they call Cloud Accelerate Partners. So we've been in that program for about three or four years now, very proud of it. And again, it puts us in that top tier of cloud partners with Microsoft worldwide. We also participate in what's called Azure Circles. So if customers or fans are looking for alternative ways to put infrastructure, let's say servers in the cloud, um, or applications in the cloud. That's what Azure provides for Microsoft. And again, we're in the top percentage of partners there who deal with Azure in the world. As you can see, we carry several gold certifications from Microsoft as well as silver. But again, just really a core focus of ours is Microsoft and delivery of their platforms to our customer base. So one of the most things we're pr or one of the things we're most proud of is our 24 by 7 help desk that we have based here in Southern California. It's full-time employees of ours who are here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and one of their primary focuses is working around Office 365 and creating a great user experience. Um, for the, par uh, the companies that we deal with. You know, we've been in business for about 12 years. You know, we've been providing IT services, so we're proud of that. You know, we're one of the fastest growing companies in the U.S. as it pertains to management of Microsoft products. Um, we consider ourselves a digital business and managed cloud service provider, which can get a little bit jumbled. But again, we look at everything that your business is trying to do from a technology perspective and try to, so to speak, digitize it and make sure that it automates processes within. And then from there, once we get you to that place you want to be in the business and we've got your business model transformed we want to help you guys manage it after the fact so hence the managed cloud stuff we do for our customers you know we have about 60 employees here in Southern California they're all engineers and operational people and just people who can help make sure that the process is seamless for our fans and to give you an idea of how many assets we maintain well over 50,000 and just to give you an idea of 1500 businesses as being kind of the the makeup of what we do um, as far as management goes across the, uh, the US and then some throughout the world and then as you can see, we've done about 5,000 plus successful projects um, over the U.S. and again worldwide. So what do we offer? You know, we have a lot of packages, a lot of support offerings, a lot of, you know, help desk offerings around Office 365. The first one I'd like to start with is just kind of our Office 365 solution packages. You know, Office 365 is an amazing platform, as Tim and Josh talked to you about before, and it really does transform the way business is done. From our perspective, we wanted to offer anything to customers from just getting you stood up in the cloud to then potentially migrating data to the cloud and then doing a lot of customization after the fact. And we'll talk about some of our packages in a few minutes. Um, we do offer a 24 by 7 award winning service desk. Like I mentioned in the US we're the 27th fastest growing managed cloud provider and um, we do have the help desk based here in Southern California here in San Diego um, that provides the experience to the users who uh, take Office 365 on as a platform. Uh, we're very proud of our in the tech know how to videos. Um, we have our own Janelle Mott, our kind of internal news reporter who spends her time creating uh, snippets if you will for customers to log on to our portal and actually look at how to do certain things like like start up a link meeting or you know, use some of the new features in Office or Outlook. Um, really unique tips that are quick and easy to follow. We also with that have what we call our 365 tech tip sheets which are just sheets that we give out to customers to look at some of the new features and functions in some of the new Microsoft product. Probably the thing we're most proud of is what we call our onboarding team and user training strategies. You know with any upgrade migration or you know move to a new technology we find that um, user habits die hard if you will. People just don't don't want to change and we want to make sure that when we do make change to the environment that both the onboarding and the ongoing training is seamless and the customer adopts whatever the technology is we put in so we have a full onboarding team and an ongoing training mechanism to make sure that people are getting the most use out of Office 365. So when we started thinking years ago about how to simplify the concept of what it meant to move to the cloud with Microsoft and onto their Office 365 platform we thought about it like building a home or looking to buy a home really. So what we originated was what we called Cloud Home, which is a product that we offer where the first step in buying any house is to find one. So what we do is we have to understand what are the things we want in our house. You know, the, the pool, do we want the, I guess, the tile roof? Um, do we want hardwood, carpet, all those things? So the thing we do for customers and what we call looking at the model home is we do an Office 365 readiness assessment for customers. It's quick, it's easy, it's typically no longer than a few hours depending on the size of customer. And at that point, once we find out that they're ready to move to the cloud, 
we what we call stand them up and get them into the Office 365 domain. From there, customers say, you know, once we bought the home, we want to buy it and move into it and really start to take our data that's on premise today and move it to the cloud. So we offer up deployment services that actually take your data that sits on premise today, let's say email um, or documents, and we move it to the Office 365 platform. In some cases, clients choose it to do it on their own. Again, we're flexible, but it's an option in our tier two. And then last but not least, we're very proud of this, is we get into all the fun customization stuff. We call it painting the walls like you would in the home where, you know, we want to come in and build intranet portals for your teams where we can help them drive down products like SharePoint and under, and help communicate information internally to your teams, driving, you know, of course, better culture, um, driving, you know, retention in our employees. Those are the things that products like SharePoint do for you. So we do all three of those. It's called Cloud Home, and it's a great product that's been adopted uh, nationwide. As we talked about before, we do have our Office 365 service desk based here in San Diego. Again, what we do is we latch on to your current Office 365 SKU. So at $2.50 a month, we provide user support and it, latch, it gives you access to our help desk and at any given time, 24 by seven, you can call and ask anything you wanna know about Office 365, the products within, and then really have a better experience overall, which is the most important. One thing we did, which we found customers finding it easier to understand, was we started to wrap what we would consider to be your hardware, your software, and your services all into one package. So we created our M SKUs. And if you notice in our M SKUs, what we have is Office 365 bundled in with our 24 by 7 help desk, um, all of the patch management and antivirus that customers need today. And we take it all the way through our uh, top tier M4 SKU where we actually provide you hardware using Microsoft Azure and their cloud to give you uh, a fully encompassed hardware software services um, platform where you don't ever need to buy hardware again. So those are SKUs that are latched onto Office 365. A lot of companies are taking advantage of them. We're excited to be able to manage them for you guys, but it's something to think about as part of our solution offerings. As I had mentioned, you know, we do do the In the Techno Web Tech series, which uh, on average has about two videos that go up a week. We have customer requests that come in asking us for how to, so we produce videos for them as well and then publish them to our site. But these videos, are, like I had mentioned, have our own Janelle Motten in them. She goes through and goes at things like how to record a link meeting or how to open up a shared mailbox in Office 365. They're really quick one to two minute videos that are really intuitive and easy to follow. So people have really enjoyed them and I think the best way to learn these days seems to be video. Video. So last but not least, how do we get there? You know, the first thing is, is obviously we'd love to meet with you if there's a chance and you're looking at Office 365. We have to do that assessment and identify the different cloud options that are there for Microsoft in their different SKUs. So we look at those and figure out what works best for your environment. Um, most importantly, let's do that network assessment, figure out if, you know, you guys are a fit for Office 365, what's going to work best, and then create an ongoing, you know, roadmap that has a little bit of forward thinking in it. And then I say to people, I mean, we really want to help transform your business business model. We want to understand the business drivers behind why you're going to Office 365, whether it's be it we want to create a more mobile workforce or we want to create a better, more productive environment for our users. Again, those are the things that we want to be invested in with you as our fans. And then as we do that, we feel like we've helped you reinvent that business model and we'll continue to do so as we manage you in the future. So with that, ManageSolution.com is our website. Um, no S at the end, by the way. And then if you want to give us a call, it's 888-563-9132. Um, we appreciate your time. Again, Josh and Tim, thank you so much. Uh, we'll chat with you soon.